Here's some little devices that I rigged up today for kind of the digital bio-crafting first workshop uh, and showing people what they can do in one simple day uh, to kind of interact uh, with the world and make stuff happen in the world. Um, so first we have here is just an Arduino hooked up to two um, uh, photo emitter uh, detector coupling pairs um, with some ants inside. The two pairs let us know if the ants are going forwards or backwards, inside or out of the nest. Um, and then this is interpreted by every time they they trick they trip the uh, the detectors. Um, it, the Arduino decides. Um, which detector got tripped first uh, and can infer direction from that. Then this gets sent to the uh, servo, which is slowly counting the amount of ants that have gone in or out. So right now, a lot more ants have gone in uh, oh, than out. Part oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so and you can see there's a serial uh, output. It's outputting right now, um, and it can store all of these uh, uh, all these devices. Or you can you can store it to an SD card or uh, to a specific file or something for a honey beehive. Uh, something like that. Uh, over here, we have the uh, wind detector coupled with a handheld laser pointer. So when this spins, uh, the laser gets activated. This was originally uh, created by Paul O'Neill um, uh, while we were uh, practicing for actually this lab and thinking of weird ideas for this lab. Uh, he decided to use an ordinary PC fan um, as a sensor for wind, so um, since it creates a, a current uh, when it's spinning, uh, we can use that as a sensor, which then goes to this Arduino Tiny, um, just this little AT Tiny over here. Uh, that right now is just being powered by the computer, but we could make this all very standalone. And um, it simply sends uh, the, a signal to this laser to go on or off. Um, whenever it detects above a certain threshold of wind. Uh, next, we'll show the... This is the ultrasonic distance sensor coupled with a addressable RGB LED strip and spark fun. Um, this right here can uses ultrasonic, uh, two beams of ultrasonic emitters and detectors um, to judge distances. Um, and then I have that going into the Arduino, which is just being powered by a socket. We could uh, plug it into one of our uh, LiPo batteries that we have around. Where are those LiPo batteries? Such as in the back of the sound laser right here. We plug that in and have it all portable, be able to take it out in the field. Um, the LEDs are all fully um, individually addressable. Um, we can control each one of them. Right now, they're just doing the very simple thing of kind of visualizing distance in terms of color and also distance down the strip, um, but there's no limit to kind of what we could do with uh, this crazy strip. Uh, oh, and then finally, we have the, the evilness detector from Buzz. But, no. Oh, well, I need to go to Madrid. Okay, so for a long time there's been lots of animal behavior people studying insects and the question has always been, is my insect inherently good or evil? Um, and so finally uh, we'll turn to the digital devices which will allow us to know if they're truly good or truly evil. Um, so first we'll take a cicada um, and we'll put it in front of our bug judger. Uh, wait, up oh, cicada, it's alright. Um, now we'll take a best beetle 
Um, we'll put it in front of the bug judger. Evil, so sorry people studying best beetles. They seem to be very nice, they're very cute. Uh, they scurry around, sit in wood, can't bite you, but inherently evil. Um, and then finally, uh, to just show uh, how this is actually going on, uh, here's the simple RFID button that I have inside the cicada. So it's just a RFID button hooked up to the SparkFun um, breakout board hook, uh, that's connected to the ID20 RFID reader. When I place it within about a couple centimeters of it, um, we can see that the electronics themselves are good. Um, but uh, whenever I put it in front of there, it sends a serial output to the computer, which I can then read in in a simple processing sketch that I've made to parse it. I have um, another RFID button inside of this cicada. Uh, and I have a tiny RFID grain that is glued inside this best beetle. And so the RFID reader can easily penetrate their shells um, or even quite a distance of plastic. So I had it where I had some on bugs that were going through tubes such as bees going into a, a hive and it was still being able to be detected. These RFID grains were small enough for my Aphenogaster cockerelli to carry, and I was able to detect it when they had moved a mealworm that had an RFID grain um, through a tube, um, so they're effective for that. Um, and this was probably one of the simplest things I had to set up. Um, really, uh, this device, you don't even need to program it because it only has the one job and uh, it just feeds the serial output processing. You make just a simple little sketch here. Store in whatever values you want uh, to uh, recognize um, or take down, and then display or visualize them in some sort of way. Cool. Okay, I think that's it.